And we're back. Welcome to the Culture and Cannabis Podcast. Happy Thursday. I'm one of your hosts, Full Time Tony, here with my guy. JC Coates is Jace, in the building. JC Coates is in the building, yeah. aka the rawest motherfucker in the game. As someone that. Pro- no. proclaim, you can call me the GOAT if you want to. Yeah, the GOAT. Chase, uh, Chuck, <laughs> Chase. Chuck is the, co- the, co- uh, the X Factor, <laughs> and Lil is the, the co founder, just so yeah. everyone knows everyone's yeah. nickname. But we also have a, another person here in the room yes. today. JC, who we got? Yeah, we have, we have a, a great guy in the industry. Um, he runs an amazing uh, boutique grow in, in town. Jonathan, the glue guy on, on Instagram, a GM of Bond Road Cannabis. Uh, hey. Hey, buddy. What's up, John? That's, what's Not going much. On? How we Enjoying doing? Enjoying the nice toasty day at the end of the day. I've been in my car all day on leather seats, so yeah, feeling like I could definitely use a shower. <laughs> so, have you been at the Have you been at the grow today, or? Uh, yeah, today today was one of those uh, you know a lot of shaking hands and kissing babies kind of days. Yeah. Um, you know, running around getting getting some future orders ready. I was out at the grow this afternoon for a little bit. Um, I don't spend. I don't spend as much time as I wish I could at the grow because I'm busy doing, you know, all the management stuff for the company. Sure. But uh, yeah, so, I enjoy going out there. So that that um, so let's talk about the the grow a little bit, right? So it's sure. uh, it's a boutique grow. You have some exciting strains in there. I want to dive into all that, but just giving us an overview of of what's going on over there, how's it, how it's kind of different than some of the other places here in town. So the big thing, um, I, as I was referring to earlier, I started in the marijuana industry. I worked uh, for Caesars Entertainment before. I was a pit boss at Harris. Um, and when they filed for their bankruptcy back in 2015, they laid off a bunch of middle management. Um, and I was laid off with a severance package. And uh, my wife and I talked about it. And financially, we were okay. So I wanted to take a year off and figure out what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Um, and then shortly after that, I became a medical marijuana patient and card holder. Uh, and then I went into a dispensary and spoke with the bud tender there. Royally hated the way that I was treated. I walked out, got in the car, looked at my wife. I said, I know what I want to do. So I got into the business. Um, and as I watched it grow from medical and just a few groves and a couple dispensaries and expand to what it is now, um, I realized there were a few key things that some people were missing. So that's kind of what I went after. So we'll, I'm sure we'll get into the history part of what I do. But um, essentially what makes us different is that we have a brand. So we are the grower uh, for GG Strains in the state of Nevada, the exclusive grower. Of course, everybody and their mom has a GG4, a Gorilla Glue 4. And chances are there's probably people out there that grow a better one than I do. Um, there's no shame in saying that. Uh, four was widely, you know, released or what have not years ago after they won their first cannabis cup. So we don't really grow GG4. We grow one, uh, which is sister glue. That's a phenotype of GG4. We have GG5, um, which is one and four across. Get it? One plus four. In case you're really high. Um, <laughs> so we have, yeah, GG5 new glue, which when we get that, uh, we're we're still working it because every genetic is different and has different needs so you know it's a lot trickier to to grow good cannabis or i'm sorry can i say weed on the show you can say whatever you want i hate saying marijuana dope fuck yeah you can say whatever you want so yeah um uh gg5 or new glue um and i'll tell you the story about that later is by far and above the best strain i've ever had it was so powerful and i have seen people who do nothing but dab rock and sweat from smoking the strain out of a bong um so we haven't unfortunately gotten there yet but i think we're just about to turn a corner we also grow glue chi which is across the uk cheese and gg4 um we grow i do glue which is a cross of wedding cake and gg4 uh also we have purple glue Right now in the market, we have a little too much purple glue. We got a little lopsided. Um, purple glue is a cross of Las Vegas Purple Kush and GG4. And we are working on uh, the newest creation for GG strains, uh, as well as the last creation from Josie Wales that's glue mints. Mm-hmm. So it's GG4 across with animal mints. Um, has a minty flavor on the exhale. It's really good. Uh, there are only five people on the planet that have tried it i'm one of those i loved it so we're working on getting her health up and getting her big and strong to get into a garden you can't just come up with a new strain and throw it in a 
you know, large scale grow. It won't survive. It takes time. You have to build up health. Um, so yeah, those are what we grow. And of course, we still grow our Bond Road Kush, which is, you know, a wonderful strain. It's actually Bubba Fett renamed, um, but it is amazing. It's a beast. People love it. I can't grow enough of it. Uh, and then we also grow uh, White 99. We call it Bonda 99. Uh, we haven't grown it in a while, but we're, we're putting it back in the garden and giving it another run. But the biggest difference, what separates us, is that we actually have a brand. It's not just Bond Road. Uh, it is the Gorilla Glue suite of strains, the G strains. So, you know, um, trying to make a name for yourself in a market like Vegas is hard enough. Uh, so instead of trying to be the brand, uh, being Anheuser Busch is okay with me too, yeah. and having you know a Budweiser, a you know well-known name. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And so, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but you know, you became a medical patient. You said in 2014, 2015, mm -hmm. 2015. Um, so, when did you get into the campus industry? Did you just dive in with Bond Road, or did you start with somebody else? No. So, um, I started in. I was hired in October of 2015 um, for a company called M Hardine and they uh, did consulting, uh, design, cultivation, HR, all you know, kind of a full service company. So that if you had a lot of money and wanted to get into the to the weed game, but you had no idea what you're doing, you would call a company like M. R. Dean. Um, so uh, myself and a, a guy named Garrett, who works for me now, um, we started. Actually, he started first. I started the day after. Um, but we started at the Flora Vega facility up on Craig Road, um, and I worked there until I blew my knee out in July. Um, but I had been hired for my now position in June. So, you know, you get hired for the big job, and then three weeks later, you blow out your knee and require two surgeries to get it fixed. So we, um, we went ahead, got it fixed, and it took a long time to rehab, and then M. Hardeen had left Las Vegas. And then uh, the guys I was, you know, that I do work for decided to wait for a while before they started. So I found myself right around Christmas time in 2015. Um, it's just bored out of my mind. And I actually uh, took a job with MMJ America uh, as a bud tender and uh, uh, eventually a manager because I wanted to understand what that side of the business was like. I wanted to talk to uh, all the medical patients and stoners, um, or both in some people like myself. Um, but I wanted to get as much market research as, as I could, um, you know, so that when I got to this job, I was better off yeah. for it. So, yeah, so, um, you know, taking over Bond Road, right, as general manager, what's that? I mean, what's that day to day look like, right? Like, what, what gives, if so you can give someone. And a perspective of what a general manager of a boutique of cultivation is, what would that be? So, all right, um, to give you an idea, when I first started, so they called me in July. They said, we started last January. Uh, it hasn't gone very well. We need you to come on in, be, you know, be our boots on the ground, um, you know, take over and, and get it to work right. So when I came in, I had uh, a lot of unflushed product, uh, a lot of failed product, um, over a couple hundred pounds. And, you know, I worked as a grunt in a grow and a bud tender and a, a shift manager in a dispensary. So really I was going in with a lot of lifelong management experience, but really no training for what I was stepping into. Of course. So my first probably nine months was spent just trying to figure out how to breathe up at four in bed at midnight and just stressing out, trying to figure things out, learn things on the fly constantly, um, you know, get acclimated with employees going through changes. So <clears throat> after that, it, it got to be, uh, okay, so mm. sorry. That's where I have to put my hands down. Because <laughs> apparently no. I'm on a <laughs> casino table and I'm. <laughs> I think the when you when you tap the table, it makes a lot of back noise on the mics. Yeah. So for everybody listening to my drum solo, I apologize. <laughs> um, so what's my day to day life like? Uh, it's basically, you know, navigating the 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 everyday challenges that there are in cultivation. No two days are alike. Every day has a new challenge. Um, 
you know, there, there's so much to learn. The laws and the rules and the regulations are constantly changing. You have to keep up with that. Um, you know, you, you have all of your employees, you know, they're my main focus, truth be told, every day. I, I look at my job as, as, you know, making sure that the 13 people that work for me have everything they need uh, to do their job the best that they can and to make sure that their paycheck's clear every other week mm -hmm. and that they don't have to, to worry about it. Um, you know, I always tell people that I think that the best leaders are nothing more than the best servants. When, when you're a, truly a good leader, um, you're always honest, you, you treat your employees with respect, not with disdain. You never use words like babysit um, or have to deal with, um, you know, I, I, I'm very appreciative of the 13 people that, that work for me and the passion and dedication that they bring. Um, you know, we don't have attendance problems. We don't have people that bicker with each other. Uh, these are all people who, you know, want to come in and do better every day and, and they want to be one of the best at, at what we do. So my job is just basically, you know, help, help steering the, the ship in that direction and, and making sure that all those people have everything they need. And then there's the other side of it too. You know, you have to be, you know, some, you know, I do have help with human resources, but I do have to be HR, sales, marketing, advertising, accounts payable, accounts receivable, you know, literally everything. So, you know, there's different things and it's constant. It's all the time. You never stop. There's no break throughout your day. Um, so it's just, you know, it's basically remembering to breathe, to keep things on pace and on track and, and to prevent anything from really, you know, falling apart yeah, yeah. For, 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 yeah for catching up that, that, that's crazy man uh, are you do you do all the sales too yeah yeah just quick question man that, that's crazy man um, <clears throat> you know the last year us working you know with you know closely with the cultivations and seeing how that operation works and it's I mean there's just so many variables that go into it right and um, I mean it, let's talk about just the flower shortage right now in the market yeah I mean that alone has been crazy yeah I mean how is that it's rough. I don't, well, everybody I, wants to buy weed, but I just don't understand you know. how there's a flower shortage, right? I mean, I feel like obviously COVID hit. I and couldn't sell a gram during COVID because yeah. all the stores shut down. They weren't doing, you know, walk-ins. It was delivery only for yeah. a while. Yeah. So they went from, you know, like their business levels dropped between sixty and seventy percent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't give away my product. Yeah. Mm. Oy, and man. then, and then it was like end of april beginning of may where all of a sudden like the market kind of came back online yeah. and then a like the demand for cannabis just kind of blew past where it was initially yeah. and i don't know why that happened and i think maybe there's a possibility that you know uh when COVID hit a lot of cultivations like all right we're just gonna cut half our staff or 75 percent of our staff i know lots of mm -hmm. cultivations i did this and yeah. um were, did we lose any of them i mean did any of them i don't i, I don't i don't know honestly and i'm i'm i think we'll probably find out here in the next six to 12 months because mm -hmm. there's some people who's fucked up their harvest schedule so bad mm -hmm. that you know it's, they're never gonna be able to come back and I think that's what's happening, right? Is that people just didn't consistently keep going. Um, our cultivation that we're working with obviously did. Um, and even with that, I mean, we're just every week selling out. And it's just, I mean, it's hard, even hard to keep up. And I mean, I talk with the buyer. She's like, well, if you know anybody else besides you that has to be the sell, let me know. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's interesting, you know, I'm. You know, it, it might just be the way that it's, the state's set up too. You know what I mean? Because the market's always going to go through, you know, the ebbs and flows. Uh, ebbs and flows. I just feel but. like, you, like, <coughs> let's just talk about like eight, nine months ago, abundance of flour in the market, like more yeah. than enough flour, like mm -hmm. too much flour in the market. Mm -hmm. Now there's not. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe we went heavy on concentrates. Maybe we went heavy on edibles. I'm not really sure what happened, but I, I think a lot. Um, I think well, I think flower sales probably went up because I think during COVID a lot of the the fancier products, the concentrates and the, the more for the culture kind of type products, went out, went out the people weren't re really buying those. Yeah. And people were buying up all the flour, man. Um, and and, it's, and that's usually the cheapest thing that you could buy at a dispensary, yeah. right? It's a pre roll. <clears throat> you walk yeah. in, spend you have ten bucks in your hand. You can usually get that pre roll. Yeah. You can get our pre roll for seven dollars at yeah, some places. It's the cheapest, you know, the lowest. Graham in, in the store. Mm -hmm. Excellent right. plug. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just, just, just drop that right in there. Uh, well, I, I want to talk about like, you know, you as a person, like being able to just kind of manage all that stuff. And it, it just, man, like, you know, we, we tour cultivations, 
you know, every day. That's what we do. All we do is we, do, we go and talk to different cultivations. You know, we're buyers in the market and we're getting to know people. And, and you know, there's a, there's a lot of crazy people out there. You know what I mean? and there's a lot of a lot of people not doing the best kind of business. You know what I mean? And then uh, there's a lot of people that are really doing a phenomenal job, right? Yeah. And you see, and you like, see like, licensed like, owners and holders, you know, really getting break, breaking their backs. What well, some would say, breaking their backs. Some would say, but but I mean, you 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 seem to care about it so much, you know, and and it's really you have a cool story how you, you know you started with your interaction with a bud tender, right? And then you know you, you, you something happened inside of you. So I want to talk about that. What is that passion? Where, where does it come from? What, why does it keep you so emotionally vested with with your work over there? Well, I think you know part of it, you know, uh, you know just starting out the conversation you know as we go through life at some point you learn that there's the person that you are and eventually it meets the person that you're supposed to be mm. you know those of us that are successful generally will tell you something akin to i'm only successful because i fucked up a whole bunch in my life mm -hmm. um so for me it was you know marijuana was that that one thing in my life that that helped it helped me become a better person it helped me realize that you know there are things about myself that i need to make better that i need to change it gave me a sense of empathy um you know i was not an empathetic person i you know i i, I grew up without parents really i uh, you know I, it was just yeah you know life you know single dad who was always on the road traveling doing sales so you know i, I grew up a little isolated as a kid so you know, which means I fucked up a lot as a young adult and a mm -hmm. teenager. Um, and even as an older adult, I mean, you know, as we go through, we, we're constantly learning and, you know, or as I call it, gaining wisdom. So for me, you know, I, I felt that I needed to give give back to marijuana. Also, you know, from working in the casino business uh, for the 10, 11 years that I did, I never once came home feeling better about what I had done that day because I didn't do anything. You don't create anything. You know, you don't, you don't make people happy. You, your first name is mother every day when you go home because mm -hmm. they've lost their money. Yeah. You've watched people lose, you know, untold fortunes that go from being very comfortable for the rest of their lives to asking you if, you, you know, you're hiring. Um, it's just a real negative atmosphere and it does not bring out the best in people. Um, marijuana, however, every day when I go to work, I know that whatever me and my team do during that day will make at least one person's life better somewhere every day. Yeah. Um, what other job in the world? I mean, maybe the medical profession or, or mental health, um, you know, but what else can average schmucks like us do that can really make a difference? Mm and really make people's lives better in one way, shape or form. No. I, so, you know, that's where I really get my passion, knowing that what I do every day makes makes a difference. Um, you know, and I'm a stoner too, and I've smoked a lot of shitty weed in my life. So, you know, I, I am a Las Vegan now, and I, I really believe that, uh, you know, Las Vegans are, are, they're a very harsh group of people. Mm. They're very judgmental, we're spoiled. Mm. We have the best of a lot of shit here. And, um, you know, I, I wanna look at these people and say, you know what, I'm giving you an honest product at a fair price. Mm. And they say, yeah, you do. Mm. Um, you know, I wanna have really great weed for Las Vegans that doesn't break the bank. Mm. Damn yeah. that thing, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> the ho the horchata yeah. from Serene. And that's the, their new line called the Fresca line. They have uh, their fresh frozen live terps yeah. uh, that they put in their CO2 machine. It's pretty interesting. I mean, this the oil co quality color is really, really interesting. Um, I wish we could do I, fresh I frozen, but you guys have seen our facility. We yeah. have room to fart. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It's <laughs> and I, and so I was going to, you know, I wanted to kind of touch on that. I mean, you know, this cannabis industry, I say this all the time, there's, you know, rats, snakes, and vultures just literally everywhere, right? I mean, it can be really a toxic place to be. How do you stay so positive with this? So it's like, with so much toxicity around, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, there's buyers who are just complete assholes, right? And so it's tough that those deal with those people, but somehow you manage to stay positive and then also not manage to stay positive you also manage to sell them weed how sure. does that work um well you know a big thing is is, is uh, you know i'm i again i'm a small boutique grow uh, for the most part we grow 
a really great product. You know, nobody bats without you know 100 percent or a thousand. I guess would would be the better way to say it. Um, so you know, we, we've grown some not so. I mean, we used to grow shit weed, man. Two years ago, <laughs> God, it was so awful. And I'm like, who do you smoke? I'm like anybody but mine. <laughs> um, no, it wasn't that bad. But um, you know, how do you stay positive? What's the alternative? I mean, you know, the one thing that's that's true about life, when you get up every day and any situation that you face, you have the innate ability to choose your attitude. You really can. You could be having a shit day, everything in your life could be going wrong. I don't want to hit the table again. Um, everything could be going wrong, but you can still choose to have a good attitude yes. eventually when you when you do that enough it, it becomes a a good habit yeah. i mean i've always been you know somewhat of a jovial guy and if you talk to the people that work for me they will tell you that i'm not always upbeat and happy and bouncing around because you know again i told you all the jobs i do there, there's a lot of a lot of weight that that i carry on my shoulders and it's a lot of pressure it's tiring i haven't taken more than two days off in in a couple of years um you know, but I stay positive because, you know, I've seen all the negative people, the vultures and the snakes, and their businesses for the most part suck. That's true. People don't like them. Yeah. They're failing. They're running in the red. They treat their employees like shit. I mean, look, you're working with marijuana, and I believe that there's a certain karmic influence when you... You know, when you're lucky enough to be given uh, a, such a, a, an awesome responsibility as in, you know, what we do every day, it's not just a bunch of people growing weed. It's, we're, we're cultivating, yeah, we're growing weed, but, you know, this weed is going to go into a lot of people's bodies. Um, you know, could go into our friends, family, you know, we, we don't want them getting sick. Uh, you know, we don't want them to, to you know, to, to be consuming shitty marijuana because god knows there's plenty of it Tons. um you know and like i said we, we haven't always been great either uh but we're, we're always you know like the kaizen model always you know always improving always getting better um but the staying positive part i mean i've i've seen all the negative people i've seen my whole life the negative people and they lead that way it just doesn't do any good. So when you work with something like marijuana, you know, you have to treat your employees like you do your weed. You have to nourish them. You have to help them grow. Um, you know, you, you have to treat them the same way. And if you don't treat your employees right, and this goes out to every one of you with a fucking license. If, you, if you're not treating your employees right, figure it out. Because until you do, you are never, never going to be truly successful. You're, if you're, you're not going to have customers that love your brand. You're not going to have, because your employees are never going to be really happy. I'm not saying everybody has to make $280,000 a year, you know, selling eights. Um, but take care of them. Pay them a living wage. I mean, if you don't, you're just never going to be successful. You've, you've got to take care of people. Otherwise, we won't take care of you. Yeah. I, I believe that. That's so, true. There's, I mean, there's just principles. There's, there's yeah. bigger laws that exist and govern over us, over us as people that, that, that's bigger than the marijuana <laughs> advertising guidelines and all that stuff. And, and, and I think treating people with respect and, uh, you know, as, as you wish to be treated yourself, you know, is one of those big factors. And I would definitely tend to agree with you. And, and uh, you brought up the, the Kaizen. The, the, the Kaizen, do you, know, do you know about that? I, uh, I no, I don't. Yeah, I was going to lie and say that I did, but <laughs> 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 they want us okay. out of the loop. I, I think it's just a principle. We would have caught you in the line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys would have caught me yeah. immediately in the <laughs> line. Just in the well, tell me about it, Anthony. <laughs> You're full of shit. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't really know everything about it, but it's a basic principle of, like you said, you know, progress, right? Uh, a commitment to getting better, right? Yeah, and, uh, yeah to improvement, um, constant improvement. Constant. And, you know, I, I love how, um, you know, vulnerable you're being and, and and you know honest and open that you're you're, you're talking about this and I I think that j just these 
types of conversations and the, the situations that you're talking about with the passion of going to, to work and it, it being a, you know something bigger this is what really separates the cannabis industry from like the alcohol industry or any of the other industries because um, you know the plant truly is special right and, and it's really impacting people in, in, in an incredible way and to be able to be a part of you know what's happening is you know it's a, good, it's a good time to be alive you know what I mean and for people like you that really see that and, and it's important to him and it's 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 a um, it's an honor right to yeah. be able to be around you and to know you and you know. yeah I would say you know just uh, we I think me and JC really appreciate you as a as a person in the industry right you know there's not many people like you who are just like honest and realistically a straight shooter I remember mm -hmm. I remember the first time meeting you at the growth facility you just kind of told us how it was and I think you know yeah. me and JC were like kind of early on of getting into the licensing deal game and we just really appreciated that knowledge right and that kind of helped us really find a place that we could sell weed at so yeah. um so thank you yeah you're welcome and thank you for the compliment you know we um one of my big things as far as running this company is i don't just have you know uh, there's always a few but but i really work at creating true relationships fair relationships um and you know some of the people that have supported us and, and have paid our light bill when we weren't that good. Um, you know, I was always honest with them every step of the way. We're changing this, we're changing that. There are a lot of people you could ask. Um, Ryan Bondis from the dispensary. He was buying, I think he was the first person that I really sold stuff to. And it was by no means, you know, it was definitely $49 a quarter level. Mm -hmm. um, and even now, much improved. We still get a batch every now and then again that this is a $49 quarter. Mm -hmm. The majority of it is not, but even the best of the best, they still have that issue. Um, but, you know, Ryan would be the first to tell you that I'm always eager to, you know, sure, I know my weed's not great, but let me show you what I'm doing to make it better. Yeah. You know, I put up three giant D hues and, and we've changed this and that and, and our nutrient formulation and you know, just all the things. And I've always told everybody who buys our product every step of the way, the changes that we're making. And if our product isn't that great, hey, look, I'm not gonna ask you to pay $3,200 a pound for stuff that's not, mm -hmm. um, you know, my boss may not like to hear that. But the truth is, is that if you're a purchaser from a dispensary and I throw a curveball by it, and then your customers are all coming back saying, What's this goat fucker weed? Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's going to put a dent in our relationship. Of course. Um, so, you know, all, all the people that I work with in the business, and now, of course, five years in, which makes me one of the original people. Yeah. Um, you know, my phone, my phone book is pretty big now. Um, and I still stay in touch with as many people as I can. Um, and that doesn't mean to say I haven't, you know, I, I've got... There was one person who helped me out in the beginning and I really fucked up that relationship all on my own. That's probably the only regret that I have so far in the marijuana business because, I mean, you know, he's a good guy doing good things and let's just say I heard something about my company that freaked me out so I, you know, I put my head down and I just kind of wanted to make sure, you know, I'd heard a rumor that our license was for sale and you know any agreements that i had that were handshake agreements i just put them to the side and you know um yeah so you know i, I that would have freaked anybody out but ever since that I, you know ever since that day i you know i'll never do that again yeah um you know losing that person as a friend and a regular contact and somebody i can talk to um that haunts me still so you know we're not always perfect but you know creating the relationships that's what this is really about marijuana is about relationships 100 percent. i mean you know think about it before it was legal you had a dude on a 10 speed or whatever right <laughs> 10 speed you'd call up his beeper he would call you back from the pay phone bring over he'd sm you know smoke them out yeah. talk about your week a little bit you know that's why we, we called it a connect yeah, yeah, a connect. A little shake yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But i think i i think i kind of miss those days sometimes too because i was just talking with jc about my uh my dealer and i don't even want to call him a dealer because that's like, just like a shitty name that's that right. just a homie that would just hook yeah. me up right yeah. um we're talking about him up in reno and you know he was just yeah he's my connect he was someone and someone that i had met at 18 years old who kind of like 
uh, nursed me through my cannabis mm. years, right? From sure. 18 to about 21 until mm. I got into the industry. And so, um, you know, I miss that guy. So shout out, I'm not gonna say his name, but shout out to Dave, man. I miss yeah. I, I miss you, Dave. I hope everything's going well, my man. So yeah. uh, I mean, if, if more more guys that are in the industry now kept some of those principles, right? Of, of, of the old connect, right? You know what I mean? Like, that's just, he, he, you said it, right? He's, he's not the dealer, right? He's the homie, yeah. he's the connect, right? He's the guy that got you through. And it's the same way today, man, with the buyers out there in the industry. It's just like you said, it's all about the relationship, right? It's all about you know, just being honest and, and showing up and, 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 and coming through when you say that you can. 100%. You know what I mean? That's um, a big thing that's missing from this business is, is reliability. Yeah. Um, you know, people will say, oh, yeah, everything looks great. They will call you by the end of the day. Uh, you know, to buy some product off yeah. you. And maybe that's a deal that you really need to go through. And mm. then they just ghost you and they ignore your phone calls. Mm. That that makes my head explode. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's not just between vendors. It's between customers. Um, sometimes this sucks because, uh, you know, I've been married for 16 years. I don't have any kids, but my wife and I are our best friends. Um, you know, with this job, I don't get to spend as much time with her as I would like. Um, you know, when I when I get home, if I get up at five in the morning, and then today will end at like six thirty, seven o'clock tonight before I'm done, and I get home, I'll have dinner with my wife. I'll talk to her for an hour, and then I'll get on my phone and I'll get into social media. Mm -hmm. um, so any direct message that comes through to Bond Road Cannabis or on Reddit or on Facebook. That's me you're interacting with, not somebody that I pay 20 bucks an hour or whatever to, mm -hmm. to answer stuff. Um, you know, and for the most part, uh, people really like that. They like having those discussions, having an insider of the industry. Of course, you always have that that asshole keyboard warrior out there that <laughs> tries to ruin your day or reputation. But, you know, it's fun because when you see it with, you know, me, you'll see, you know, 30 other people jump on that. Because <laughs> um, I think everybody knows that my intentions are, are good and, yeah. you know, none of us are perfect, but, you know, there's no reason why we can't try to be yeah. um, or at least be the best version of ourselves that we can be. Um, so yeah, you know, it's 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 a matter of not only having the connections and re you know relationships with say between me and the dispensaries, um, or with other vendors like we're we're talking to other vendors right now to try to get a 710 line for Bond Road. It won't be a, a big thing because we're a small grow, but you know rather than just turn our trim into distillate three or four times a year, you know, it'd be nice to maybe get it out right away after we trim and, mm -hmm. and have it turn into some shatter or, or something like that for the 710 crowd so they can get in on the glue. Very it, cool. And it yields well and it's, you know, and they're, they're good extraction strains. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, having those kinds of relationships as well, um, you know, yeah, it's what it's all about. Um, That's great. A lot of people miss that though. They, they really do. To them, it's just, I miss it. it's always about business. It's always about trying to fuck that guy out of the extra nickel. Yeah. You know, uh, I think everything can be fair. There, there's, there's a point at which the shops make money, the cultivators, the production people, they make money, and the customer pays a fair price for a decent product. Mm -hmm. There's a point where that exists. Yeah. We're too early in this game now, and there's, you know, like my bosses, they've got shit millions sunk into our growth I mean, they haven't gotten a nickel back yet they sat a couple of years dormant then we had to go through our growing pains we're still figuring shit out i mean you know everybody thinks that hey i got a license yeah. so it's 50 supermodels and hookers and 30 <laughs> pounds of weed and 20 pounds of blow and we're on a 100 foot yacht no <laughs> it's not like that at all, yeah. guys. Dude, like little cultivators like me, we ain't making shit. Yet. Yeah, it's more like we're in a minivan driving from Vegas to Reno to go go yeah. sell some weed and get some content done. And not just any minivan, a minivan with the wood panel on the side and a donut for one of the wheels. So it's it's a lot harder to make a buck in this in this business yeah, than anybody no. outside of it realizes. Yeah, people really believe that people are getting rich off selling weed. It's not that. It's you're, you're getting really people are getting 
getting rich off the the buyout, right? It's like you know when people when when a license gets bought out and that brand has a good brand name, that is when people get paid. Mm -hmm. But any time before that, you're not getting paid. I mean, JC are uh, are uh, in the middle of that right now, right? I mean, we're in the middle of this growing process of you know we're not millionaires by any means, but we're we're trying to grow a million dollar company. So yeah. that's what it comes down to. Yeah, to, yeah, it's the Kaizen. The Kaizen. The, the Kaizen. I'm going to start using that now. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, man. Uh, listen, thanks for coming on, brother. Sure. I, I really appreciate, appreciate it. You. I, I love you. You know, you represent one of the good guys, and, you know, I love to be aligned with that. And where, Thank where, you. where can they find you on, on Instagram? And uh, So on Instagram, we're at Bond Road Cannabis. And by the way, if you ever want to know where Bond Road came from, it's what Tropicana Avenue was called until 1958. So oh. it's that old school Vegas where they had connections with the customers that came in, knew you on a first name basis, right? Yeah correlation um so bond road cannabis on instagram um we do have a website we're currently retooling it it's you know bondroadcannabis.com i'm going to tell you don't go there now and you're going to go but it's terrible so we're going to we're going to redo it um we haven't had a chance to yet um so we have that and then um yeah, I mean, we're easy to get a hold of. If you ever have any questions, just shoot us a direct message and I will personally respond to you. Generally, very quickly, too. I don't like to push things off. So, um, and then, you know, pretty soon here, once we kind of feel better about it, we'll get back into doing pop ups again, which we'll announce uh, on our Instagram. So, and please, whenever you see a Bond Road pop up, it'll always be either myself, our grower Jackie, she's great, our processing manager, Mario and our staff. We don't hire people to go out and do our interactions for us. So um, come on out, say hi to us, get to know us. We'd love to meet everybody who supports us. And if you are a supporter of Bond Road, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Cool. cool. Thank you, Jonathan. Awesome. Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, shit, JC. Yeah. We yeah. just, we legit, before we do this podcast, we were in the car for about seven hours. Yeah. Woke up at, what, 5 a.m. this morning, drove to Reno, worked in the spots where there were cell phone connections, yeah. talked about what we were sending out when there wasn't cell phone connection. I mean, we're grinding, brother. Grinding, brother. Yeah. We did. We just shot six episodes of Culture is Food, just got into three new dispensaries up in Northern Nevada. I mean, hey, man, we're making we're making moves. We're making moves, man. Um, you know, we have a vision and we're, we're executing. You yeah. Know? So uh, I think we're now in Sierra Wilderness in Reno and Carson, yep. Canna, uh, Bloom Reno, and then a bunch of dispensaries in Las Vegas that I can't remember right now. Yep. And uh, we have six really cool new episodes of Culture's Food that will be coming out over the next couple weeks. Uh, if you haven't seen on the Culture's Food Instagram page, we're doing a giveaway yes. for the Finger Licking Foodie Tour. Um, mm -hmm. That's the Chinatown Foodie Tour. That's for you and another person. Go check out three amazing restaurants, EDO, Lamai, and Sparrow and Wolf. Um, all great restaurants in um, Chinatown. If you want to check out more on that stuff, watch our latest episode with uh, the Finger Looking Foodie Tour. And um, and yeah, that's that's, that's that's a wrap, brother. I think that's, that's, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next Thursday. Peace. Peace. Thanks. <laughs>